Okay. All right. Here we go. I've got my book snob sweater. I've got my adorable little uh, bookie earrings that my bonus mom made for me. Oh, I have been looking forward to this video all year and I haven't even had a channel all year, so that's funny. But there are very few things I love to talk about more than books. So of course I had to make a video for you about the books I read in 2021. Welcome back to Go Big and Go Home School. My name is Maggie. I'm a bookaholic. It's true. I'm also the homeschooling mama of 10. We're in our 18th year of homeschooling. And for many of those years, I could not do a whole lot of reading for myself because I was busy, busy, busy. Fortunately, life is now at a pace where I can get some more reading done. And for most of my life, I would say that my style for selecting books was very whimsical, meaning I didn't really have a style for selecting books. I didn't have a plan. I didn't make lists. I just read. And now I have discovered I really like making lists and plans and accepting challenges so that's what I've done this past year. Actually, for the past two years, I have accepted the challenges put forth by the wonderful podcast group called the Literary Life Podcast Discussion Group, which is on Facebook. And of course, the podcast can be heard wherever you hear podcasts. It is an excellent way to get some laundry done. My literary life just exploded this year. It was a wonderful year for reading and books. I learned, I grew, I laughed, I cried, all that good stuff. And I can't wait to share some of these books with you. Some of them I loved, some of them I did not love. First, a little disclaimer. I do not take responsibility for your ludicrously long Amazon book wish lists when you're done watching this video. Okay, as I said, this is the second year that I have accepted the challenge put forth by the Literary Life Podcast Discussion Group, and I had a lot of fun with it. Let me see if I can find this list for you. Okay. True to Maggie form. It's a mess. I've got stuff crossed out, changed, and scribbled on, and there's probably coffee on here. And oh, look at this, look at this signature little happy person. Compliments of one of the children. So the way this challenge works is that you're given various categories and then you get to choose which, which books you plug into those categories to meet the challenge. There's no prize money. There's no pat on the back. Nothing like that. But you do have a wonderful online community of brilliant people who have the most insightful conversations about these books that you're all reading together all over the world. So for 2021, I was determined to make it. And a little secret, I haven't quite yet. I'm filming this just after Christmas, and I think by the time it's edited and posted, I will have finally finished the final book on my list, which was a really deep and thoughtful one, which I shouldn't have saved for right at the end. But I'm pretty confident that I can finish. The challenge for this year was very cleverly called the 192021 challenge. That is 19 books for 2021. And I'm not going to go through all of the categories, but I do hope that I can inspire some of you to hop on the bandwagon and join the challenge with us. So for 2021, some of the challenges were a poetry anthology, a book or selection of letters, an ancient Greek or Roman work, a Victorian novel, a Shakespeare play, a book you've avoided, a book that you started but didn't finish, a regional or local book, a book in a genre you don't normally read, an obscure book mentioned on the podcast, and an other world book. Of course, there are 19 books. I didn't mention them all. And I I've actually only picked five that I want to talk with you about. This was really hard, of course, narrowing down my list. 
and I'll link my full list down below. Also, these are not all the books that I read for the year. I kind of lost track partway through because as you can see, my organizational system leaves something to be desired, but I think that I rounded out at about 60 books. I chose the five that I was going to share with you based on the biggest impact, not necessarily ones that were my favorite or that were the most fun or even that I would necessarily recommend to everybody. But as Caldecott would say, it doesn't matter how many books you get through. It matters how many books get through you. And I would say that these books definitely fit that description. Unfortunately, I don't have them all to show you the physical copies. This is because I embraced audiobooks this year. I did a lot of traveling, I did a lot of laundry, and I did a lot of walking and dishes, and audiobooks were a way for me to get in a lot of reading that I otherwise would not have been able to. I was so grateful. The first book that I want to share with you was The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. The Sparrow is... Poignant. I wanted to use the word poignant, but it's not quite strong enough. This book is piercing and sharp and painfully beautiful. It is also horrible and ugly and gut-wrenching. I chose this for the category of a genre that I don't normally read, which for me would be science fiction. It is that, but it's also so much more. The setting is futuristic and Earth has made first contact with an alien species. So that definitely is a little bit out of my normal genre, but I was instantly drawn in and fascinated with the, the anthropological themes, um, themes of humanity and faith and religion, and what it means to be human. If you are up for a book that you will really wrestle with and maybe not win, that wrestling match with yourself, this is the book for you. I might read The Children of God this year, which is the sequel that's just been staring at me from the shelf for a while, but I'm not sure yet. I definitely give The Sparrow five stars, but it is not for emotionally fragile people or children. On the opposite of the spectrum, we had 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. This book is nothing short of a gem. It was exactly what I needed to help me recover from the sparrow. It fit into the category of a collection of letters, and these are real letters by real people. Um, it was a correspondence between a really witty, funny, brilliant woman in New York City and an English bookseller. And it was written just after World War II. It's really rich with details about life in both countries and just two people who are just so completely different from each other over a 20 year period. It's short, it's funny, it's interesting, and I definitely give it five stars. The next book I want to share was for the book you have avoided category. And for me, what I originally chose was Mathematics is God Silent because I have avoided math and books about math for my whole life. And as I'm not a quitter, I managed to keep avoiding this book for the entire year and realized last week. I was not going to finish the challenge if I was going to stick with that book in that category. So instead, I chose an essay, The Mathematician's Lament by Paul Lockhart. And I'm so glad I did. Now, I did avoid this essay for a number of years, and it was about math, which was my personal challenge to myself. So I'm going to say that cheating was acceptable here. It worked out because this essay had an impact on me and I'm so glad I read it. In fact, I would say that I am now even more motivated to read Mathematics is God Silent this year. And maybe by the end of the year, I will be able to say that I am no longer a person who hates math. This essay really helped open my eyes as to why I hate math. It is a scathing criticism of the way that the educational system in the world today treats mathematics as a subject 
and why so many of us just don't get it or like it. As it's a pretty short, easy essay, I would highly recommend this to every homeschooler. Read it early in your journey and be brave and try to explore new ways of teaching math. Okay, number four, I have a confession to make. I am not a Jane Austen fan. I realize that this is a defect in my literary character, and so I sought to rectify this defect, and I read Mansfield Park with the Lit Lifers, and I am glad I did. Now, I can't say yet that I properly identify myself as a Jane Austen fan. Mansfield Park is the book that Austen fans love to hate, or is just not really appreciated in those circles. But I was so grateful for the podcast, the Literary Life podcast, which really pulled back the veil to help me see the rich symbolism and genius that Austin wove into this book and firmly put me on Team Fanny. If you love Austin, but you didn't love Mansfield Park, I would encourage you to give it another shot and really examine the characters in this book and what they represent. I'm glad I read it. I might not read it again for a long time, but I probably will pick up some more Austin in the near future. Number five in the other world category, and this would be for books where you start in one world and you go in between our world and another world. A lot of my books fit into this category because that's a genre that I really like. And I actually cheated again because it's my challenge and it's my list and there's no prize money. So I get to make the rules. And I just chose three children's books, of course, from the Chronicles of Narnia. I have been a Narnia fan from the time I was an infant, I think, and I have reread them countless times, but I think I am finally to that point in life that C.S. Lewis so famously called the point at which you are old enough to read fairy tales again. And I really relished reading three or four of the Chronicles of Narnia with the kids again this year. And just letting it wash through me and grab all those little nuggets of medieval cosmology and theological wisdom and just pure fantasy magic. If you haven't read the Chronicles of Narnia, you've just got to, and you need to start with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I don't care what anyone else says. Thanks for letting me talk with you about the books I read in 2021. I am really excited to make a video about what I have to look forward to reading in 2022. Please check out the Literary Life podcast discussion group with Angelina Stanford, Cindy Rollins, and Thomas Banks. Join the Facebook discussion. I hope that you'll jump into this year's reading challenge with me because I love to talk about books. If you're reading anything, Feel free to share in the comments. I love seeing what other people are reading. Happy New Year and happy homeschooling.